This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Only a couple of more days until the NFL draft, which means it is time to start finalizing our bet slips over at FanDuel Sportsbook to help us start that process. We're going to have Dr. Ed Fang on today, getting his read on his overall NFL draft betting process, where he sees value at FanDuel Sportsbook, and more to get you ready for Thursday night. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work at thepowerrank.com. Check out Ed on Twitter, at the Power Rank, and on the Football Analytics Show, wherever you get your podcasts. Ed, happy draft week to you. How you doing? I'm doing great. There's nothing like the NFL draft for everyone who's obsessed with the NFL to show how obsessed they are with the NFL. It's a fun week. Thursday night's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And probably a little bit extra fun for you, given all the Michigan, how central Michigan is to this entire draft, be it via J.J. McCarthy, Jim Harbaugh picking inside the top five, at least for now. You know, a lot of <laughs> Michigan central stuff there as well. Yeah, there there is a lot of Michigan stuff. Uh, I wish that information made it easier to predict where, what was going to happen in this draft. I'm not really sure that it does. Yeah. We'll get into both those people that you mentioned jd mccarthy and, and jim harbaugh i actually really think there is a pretty wide range of outcomes for those uh two men so uh we'll talk about it all right so we'll dive in and talk to ed about his process and much more here in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts if you listen to this on tuesday we have a dinger tuesday betting podcast up for MLB tonight, you can find that on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV+. Plus. We'll also have one more NFL draft show coming up on Thursday this week. Last-minute bets as to the week after we get in the final mock from Peter Schrager. Adam Schefter typically posts stuff on Thursday morning. So we'll kind of recap all that news and try to identify any last-minute value on the board at FanDuel Sportsbook. That'll be on Thursday morning right here in your podcast feed. So go search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Hit subscribe, and if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Dingers, blasts, moonshots, whatever you call them, everyone loves home runs. With FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more. That's right. Dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on America's number one sports book. Just bet on a player to hit a home run, and FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. As if you needed any other reason to love the long ball. Make every moment more a FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Mid Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-gambler.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call you under 327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call one 877 hope y or text open y in New York. Now, Ed, we've had a decent number of draft shows here on the show. Uh, so we've talked about this process before, but it's also been a while. It's been a year, obviously. So what does your process look like when it comes to betting the NFL draft? Right. It changes every year. I think the markets change every year. So I try to change a little bit with it. This year, uh, I'm still trying to use wisdom of crowds, uh, but I, I actually really haven't kind of uh, in past years, I've tried to do a sharp mock uh, type wisdom of crowds stuff. So I'll take 10 people that someone like Benjamin Robinson will tell me that are very good at predicting the draft. It's usually a lot of these guys at NFL.com that we'll talk about Daniel Jeremiah, Peter Schrager. 
Um, I haven't done that this year. Uh, part of the reason is because Kevin Cole has posted some really uh, interesting data over on his site, unexpected points. He actually has these histograms that are based on the mock draft data, and they look at the distribution of teams where a player could go. We'll talk about some of those later. Um, that has been a really big tool of mine. And it's, it's all based on uh, the data from grinding the mocks. So I am trying to use that. I'm trying to really focus on later first round type bets. I think that I think there's just a lot of news and buzz and information about those top 10 picks. Those markets have kind of been around forever. I mean, they, they seem pretty mature by the time I even started looking at these markets about a week and a half ago. So I'm trying to stay at the latter part of the first round. I think that's where data is going to help you more. There's just not a lot of there's just not as much interest about, you know, what Seattle is going to do at 17 or, or whatnot. So um, that's been my approach for this year. We'll talk about some of the results. Uh, but yeah, again, it changes every year. Um, and also, I you know, I think maybe things will get a little bit different as we get towards the end. Um, I think there is more of a top down approach to use one part of the market to perhaps find value in another. Uh, we'll probably get into examples of that very soon. Yeah, and talking about the mature markets, it's the top of the draft. It's the buzzy names like quarterbacks, buzzy teams and stuff like that that are right. going to get more eyeballs, more reporting. So trying to avoid that and pick up on the little breadcrumbs of information you can get. Like that's where I found the most value so far is uh, like the Rams specifically for me have been a team that I've targeted a couple times with like, to draft X position because we haven't talked about the Rams a whole lot. They never have first round picks. They're not right. I was going to say they're not in the quarterback market, but I did take them to take a quarterback at 26 to one. So I think they very well could be in the quarterback market. Um, mm -hmm. But like the less buzzy teams, I think are the ways to go kind of in line yep. with what you were saying. And we'll talk about that as the day goes along. But first I do want to talk to you. Cause like, been betting the draft for a while now. We, we focused on it most intensely back during the COVID year when yeah, there was nothing right. else to bet on. So <laughs> we focused on it a lot then. But yeah, I think you'd started the year before that too. So what changes have you noticed, uh, whether it be markets offered, information, anything else since that time? There's been some uh, Twitter slash X buzz about the lack of information this year. This idea that the NFL is really kind of cracking down on leaks because of the whole betting thing and some of the scandals and some of the scandals that have kind of reached the, the NBA. Um, I think that has interesting consequences because it perhaps means that data is a little more valuable um, and that, you know, no one is going to have kind of inside information on, let's say, the number five pick. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens and, and see how predictive everything is as we head into Thursday. Speaking of being predictive, let's talk about the second overall pick. That's been one of the buzziest uh, markets recently. When I sent you the rundown yesterday, Jaden Daniels <laughs> minus 175. Yeah. He's yep. now back out to minus 390. He was minus 110 at one point last week as Drake May caught a lot of buzz. It seems like that was just because Jaden Daniels agent, agent liked a tweet and made sent one emoji. So it's kind of a weird reaction. But we've seen the market shift back towards Daniels. Any positions for you in this market, Ed? And what's your read on this market right now? I have zero positions on this. This is exactly the kind of thing that uh, I don't feel like I'm going to be particularly good at. Uh, a lot of these sharp mockers are going to be like, are, are just going to have more information, more connections. So, um, yeah, we have seen massive movement towards Jaden Daniels at the number two overall position. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. I talked to Matt Waldman, who does rookie scouting portfolio, and he, he would actually take Michael Penix here, uh, which was a very interesting conversation on my cot podcast. He has Penix as his QB, too, from the extensive film study that he does. Obviously, there's no chance that actually happens. Uh, we're looking at three quarterbacks uh, potentially to go here. Um, you know, I mean, May was in this position for a long time, and then I think Daniels has kind of overtaken him as, as the process has gone on. And, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what I expect to happen. Uh, but, but no, no, no bets this high up, uh, you know, in just a, a market that's at this mature at this point. For yeah. Me. I have Daniels at plus 265 and nice. I was thinking about hedging for a bit when, when may was two to one. And then I missed out on that number cause it shortened a ton. And I was like, well, I might as well not bother now. Cause it's not like, like I have an anti hedge mindset because unless it's like life-changing money, which it's not. 
Um, I don't want to neuter my good bets. And so I was like, okay, you know, I, I've gotten good movement. I don't want to, you know, cut this one off at the legs. And then I missed the boat. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just let it ride. And now it's back to a point where it's like, okay, Mays plus 370, McCarthy 10 to 1. I could consider it. I still have a hard time. Like, I'll explain this in like PhD terms for you, Ed. I, I, my null hypothesis is I'm going to not hedge. And that has sometimes worked against me, but I'm still kind of holding firm there. I just feel like I'd rather just like let a, a bet that's worked in my favor ride. And if I don't win, then I don't win. That's kind of like, you know, that can happen with betting. I think I'd rather just kind of let this one stand than try to take a position on Mayor McCarthy to lock in a profit. But May is at such a good price that it costs you so little to hedge. Correct. Right. I feel like I would do it. Right. Like, I mean, yeah, you're only cutting into your profit from this probably very profitable Daniels bet by, I mean, literally pennies on the dollar. Right. Right. To hedge right. a little bit. Yeah. Um, and you could potentially do really well if May's the pick. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I would do it. You My know? odds of hedging have increased as his odds have gotten longer because I don't think that the certainty of Daniels going second has increased. So I think that the movement, I think the movement last week was very artificial. I think the movement now is artificial as well towards Daniels. So I'm mm -hmm. starting to get there, have not gone there yet. Now, if I were to hedge Ed, I might consider some on JJ McCarthy too. He's down to 10 to 1. And it seems like McCarthy's range of outcomes is it absurd for this year and yeah, of the like sure. the big four quarterbacks it seems like his his range of outcomes is the largest right now his draft position at FanDuel Sportsbook uh five and a half over his plus 112 under minus 148 now you watched McCarthy his entire career when he was getting snaps and Kate McNamara as a true freshman that's right any McCarthy markets enticing to you right now yeah, not really. I, I really don't really know what's going on with this. Uh, you know, a lot of the narratives are that the Vikings are going to move up to four and, and draft them there. Um, you know, that might happen. It might not. Um, I, you know, I, I'm actually, uh, I've actually kind of taken a look at where he is in the markets for every pick. So I just wrote this down from FanDuel today. He's like plus 450 be number three, plus 400 be number four, plus 450 be number five, plus 550 be number six. If anything, I would kind of look at those markets and see if there's any change and then met, maybe bet something later. Um, so, you know, if if at six, six is the Giants, right? Yeah. So if that were to go to plus 100 for whatever reason, um, because they maybe rightfully don't have faith in Daniel Jones and then, you know, try to go bet what position the Giants take at, at the first position if I could, uh, with their first pick, if I could find that that market. Uh, you guys at FanDuel don't have everything up right now. Right. I know there, there's not a market for the Chargers out there, which is pretty interesting. That one moved a lot. Um, it's moved a lot today. Uh, I was looking at that exact oh, same it, thing earlier on. Uh, it was 100 to 1 for them to take a quarterback first. And apparently some places have it at 5 to 1 right now. I'm curious about that. Um, I've not heard anything to lead me to to buy into that movement, but it's uh, it gets your attention, right? Right. Certainly does. I couldn't find Los Angeles Chargers position of first pick this morning. So yeah, they're not up at FanDuel right now, but I had seen movement okay. elsewhere that they were down to five to one to take a quarterback. Um, okay. I don't don't know why, but. <laughs> got it got my attention, Ed. I'll say that. Now, is the reason you're looking at these specific pick markets because it's longer odds and thus you're playing into the volatility of McCarthy. Is that kind of your incentive to look at those markets versus the more stable markets, such as an over under draft slot? Uh, I don't think over under draft slot is all that stable. I just feel like the markets for the picks one through 10 have been around for the longest. Obviously yeah. we, we have a lot of certainty about what's going on with the, with that first pick. So obviously no value there. Um, but you know it gets interesting in four or five. It gets it gets interesting with the fourth and fifth pick because yeah. we don't know what's going to go there. There's a lot of possibilities for trade. Um, yeah, if you're going to see action, that's probably going to be at those two places. And then let's figure out how to use those market moves to to make good bets in in other quote unquote secondary markets. Yeah, right now, uh, McCarthy four to one to go fourth overall and to go fifth overall. McCarthy is uh, 450, as Ed mentioned earlier on. Now, in the past, Ed, it seems like you've had a lot of success in kind of applying your your numbers, which can say, OK, Team X struggles at Y. Therefore, maybe they'll be more more likely to draft position Z 
things like that. So when you look at those markets, team to draft which position with their first player, any value you see right now at FanDuel Sportsbook? Right. I actually don't think it's my analysis, Jim. Um, I think my success there, I think it was Houston a couple years ago. But again, it was just what we talked about before, right? The market for the third pick moves. I think that was the year they took Derek Stingley. So the market for the third pick moved massively towards Derek Stingley. But the market for the position of Houston's first pick, I don't know. I think I got plus 400, plus 450. Yeah. Um, so I think it wasn't my data. It was just, I mean, yeah, I could use my data and I can tell you what these teams need. But like what I think they need and what my numbers say they need uh, might not correspond to, with the reality of what they're going to pick. Right. And I think that's an important part of betting the draft. Like, don't forget about what you think they should do. Right you got to make a prediction about what they're actually going to do. Right. And sometimes that doesn't make sense. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, it, it, it's more, it's more of the top down approach with, with, with the value. Uh, again, um, I, I think I, I don't have any particular market that I'm interested in right now to give you. We'll talk about some other bets later, but I think, again, it's that top down approach where you could potentially find value, especially as things, uh, We'll probably get pretty interesting over the next few days. And it's hard to move all markets at once. Um, you get action on a certain market and you'll you'll sports books will react to that, but it's hard to change all the correlated markets immediately. So that's right. what you're talking about is kind of getting the right. lagging indicators. Like you can obviously shop around because like there are like a bunch of no hold markets out there right now because there are so many different markets yep. out there. These markets aren't as liquid, so there's they're not going to be as efficient. Like you can find a lot of inefficiencies, whether it be via uh, looking at, at uh, across books, price shopping, trying to find lagging markets for things that have moved, things like that. So when you look at the board right now, Ed, what are your favorite bets for the NFL draft over at FanDuel Sportsbook? For sure. Uh, So I'll give you one that has not moved, which is a little strange, and one that has moved, but I still think there is value. So the first one is Terry and Arnold, the the cornerback out of Alabama. I actually put this in uh, in five nuggets on Saturday. This is a typical example of how I'm using Kevin Cole's data um let's see so he he will do the histograms and uh you can kind of estimate that there's about at least a 60 percent chance that arnold goes before the 16th pick um i think when i put it in the newsletter i think i first saw under 15 and a half at plus 102 i think it was minus 102 by the time i put it in the newsletter um there's still value even at the so the snapshot of the data is from last week when Kevin posted it, that still suggests value. And then also uh, Benjamin Robinson at Grind in the Mocks put uh, up some data. So he he gathered a ton of new data on Monday. And one of the conclusions from that was that Arnold's going to get picked sooner rather than later. I don't know why this hasn't moved. Um, I, I think it's a really good bet. So Terry and Arnold under 15 and a half minus 108 is, is a pretty good one. Uh, the other one I want to talk about is... Uh, uh, crap was uh, Troy Troy Fo- F- Fotanu, uh, the Washington offensive tackle. Uh, this is another one that kind of started with uh, Kevin Cole's data. Um, so when you when you look at him, um, you know it's about eighty percent that he goes over fifteen and a half, and the markets really agree with this one. Uh, I I don't have it written down, but you know yesterday you could have bet over fourteen and a half for roughly even odds i think over 15 and a half was plus money don't hold me to that it's written down over there somewhere <laughs> in another part of the room but this market has moved right so it's kind of agreeing with what the mock draft data is is saying um so this is a bet that i really like uh it's pretty interesting i also look at some of the sharp mock drafters uh our friend evan silva actually has fotano going 10th to the jets um who are who are definitely picking brock bowers according to everyone else right (laughs) so uh so evan doesn't agree with this at all but a lot of the other data you know it's it's a wisdom of crowds type thing um a lot of the data suggests fotano over 16 and a half uh the most likely uh, sorry over 15 and a half the most likely landing spot according to the mock draft data is seattle at 16 um, due to need, due to uh, 
Futana's a, a local guy because he played at Washington, so he's right there in Seattle. Uh, a lot of people think he goes there. So, um, yeah, that's another bet that I really like. Yeah, his uh, his old OC is the OC in Seattle right now as well. So not just local, but also I think their offensive line coach might be there too. I know there's someone else on staff, not just right. uh, the OC who is also there in Washington, which is why we've heard a lot of like Penix buzz. I have not bought that. I am more willing to buy the Fatanu stuff um, over 15 and a half minus 158 on him. I think it's it's partly because we're seeing quarterbacks and receivers get shoved up. There's been some steam around Byron Murphy going pretty high end. I took Murphy top right. 10, three to one. Uh, so like you're getting some guys like this shoved down, but also like uh, from a hierarchy perspective at tackle, it seems like alt is likely the top tackle. Not for yeah. sure there, but then JC Latham has been getting a lot of buzz recently too, is potentially right. challenging alt. And so if you're like stacking up the tackles, it seems like Fatana is getting shoved down there, but also getting shoved sure. down with guys like Byron Murphy getting pumped up and then, maybe even quarterbacks going, I don't agree with this, but like, it sounds like there's a, a, a shot like Peter Schrager said today on, I think the Pat McAfee show that like he thought all six quarterbacks could go in the first half of round one, which would boggle my mind, but like, Hey, it could happen. Um, and Schrager is very smart. So when yeah. you have that many quarterbacks receivers and potentially a couple defensive guys in there too, along with two tackles, that's how you can pretty easily get to, over 15 and a half, even if Futanu himself maybe doesn't slide a ton. And Futanu is also behind uh, some of these other offensive tackles too, right? Like F Fuaga from, from Oregon state and F Fashanu from Penn state as well. Yeah. yeah. So and Fashanu, it's he's, been he's really and... looking like the fourth or fifth guy at right. the position. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. Right now he's fifth. Um, so even like, yeah, I didn't even mention Fashanu, but um Latham is the guy who I think 14 to yeah. one is actually not a bad number on him to be first offensive line first drafted. to be the yeah, first the Alabama offensive lineman. guy, right? What's that? He's the Alabama, Alabama guy, right tackle. Um, your guy, Jim Harbaugh could use right tackle, uh, drafting fifth overall for now. I right. think they're probably, they're like plus two eighty to trade down a fan duel. I think that one's actually pretty interesting. Let me see if that plus two eighty. So that that's a ton of really. I actually really think uh, if you're going to look at any market, it should be that market for the fifth pick. Yeah. Uh, I actually wrote DK has like Chargers offensive lineman minus one seventy five. Yeah, but there's two receivers that are favored to be the fifth pick. So neighbors right. and Harrison. Uh, the draft really gets interesting at four with Arizona. What are they going to do? Are they just going to take a wide receiver? Are they going to trade down? And then five, uh, it gets pretty interesting. So, yeah, those are the markets I'm keeping an eye on. They're plus 280 to trade the pick at FanDuel, and I think there is value on yes in that one um, based on how many high-end players there are, based on how many needs that the Chargers probably have right now. I think the fact they I mean, do mesh pretty well with Latham is why I'm intrigued by Latham at 16 to one or 14 to one to be the first awesome offensive lineman. But we'll talk more about that on Thursday too. some last minute bets for the NFL draft. And any final thoughts for you before Thursday? Are you buying this buzz that Harbaugh wants a lineman and wants to run the ball? I'm buying the buzz that he wants a lineman uh, because I think they need a lineman. Like they don't yeah, need a left don't tackle. Think, What's that? Don't you think they need a wide receiver more? Uh, probably, but I think they could get that at the top of the second. Um, like I think there'll be some guys there, like they need speed and you can get some speed where they're drafting. So I, I like, I buy it. I don't, I think that everyone's like kind of gone too far with like the, the Harbaugh meathead thing. Like, oh yeah, he just wants to run the football all the time. It's like, no, he's, you know, just like, I think he wants to be more physical. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be where like he totally ignores receiver, but I do think that they need to address the right side of their offensive line. Eventually. Keep I think it's more so about like the depth of the two positions. Like I think wide receiver is deeper. They're better able to get a competent wide receiver with their second round pick than a competent offensive tackle with their second pick. I think that's kind of where I come down to with it. I feel like they need some receivers. I, I think mean, are you really got like is like Quentin Johnson your wide receiver one right now? I mean Josh Palmer. Yeah. Josh Palmer is your wide receiver. Hey, they brought one. in Marquez Valdez Scantling for a visit. What about that? You know, what could go wrong? Yes. What could possibly go wrong with MVS? I mean, he, your, if he came in, yeah, he's your wide receiver one. There was someone else they brought in. Oh, it was uh I 
it's like a convergence of like my weakness. I love DJ Chark. Um, and they brought in DJ Chark for is it? And like I, they need speed and like MVS and Chark are like super, super flawed players, but like they're both fast. And I like I was like, oh, I can kind of actually see Chark like in that offense, like not as like a a featured guy, but like oh, I, I didn't hate that honestly. They didn't sign him, but they brought him in. So I'm I hope that happens. I don't think they need speed. I think they need anyone with a pulse that can catch a football. They need juice. They need juice. They've needed juice for decades at this point. Also, I think the Rams do, which is why I think the Rams tend to want to draft a receiver first is still very, very tempting. Um, But like, yeah, I just, I think they need juice. Like it's so, they're so slow. It's hideous. I don't know. I feel like they need someone who can catch the ball. That, yep. Or they could just get both and get Malik neighbors. Why not do both all at once? You could, yeah. I mean, you're you're out of you're, you're exactly you're out of position where you could do that. Yep, absolutely. All right, that is all that we have here for today here on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, no show Wednesday because this is the show for Wednesday going up on Tuesday night. Back with you on Thursday. Last minute bets of the NFL draft. After that, last minute day info comes out from Peter Schrager, Adam Schefter, etc. We'll go through the available markets of FanDuel and let you know where the lingering value lies. Ed. What is going on for you this week over at the Power Rank? I'm writing my free email newsletter. Check that out at thepowerrank.com. Grab five nuggets if you are looking for any action on a particular weekend. Also had some really good shows on a football analytics show. I had Matt Waldman on last week. Uh, we talked about quarterbacks. He gave me his take on... Uh, on. Um... Oh, actually, I asked him about, asked him about J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. But I think his take on Michael Penix is even more interesting. So you might you're gonna have to buy rookie scouting portfolio um, to 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 get to get that. Um, but I, I really enjoy talking to him because we end up talking more about like player development than anything else. And he had some really interesting responses about whether quarterback development was mental or physical. Check that out, the Football Analytics Show. And then I also had Kevin Cole on this morning. That isn't quite up, but it should be up by the time that uh, this goes live. So I've known Kevin for a long time, and yeah. he's not a better, but like his instincts about what's going to happen, like his instincts about when the data is wrong, I think tend to be really good. And he's so tuned into what's going on in the NFL that um, I really trust what he said. That's why I chose to have him on this week. Um, so, uh, yeah, football analytics show, wherever you get your podcasts, Kevin's, uh, skeptical, like, uh, skeptical, like cynical mind is very good for markets like the NFL draft where people get overconfident. So I could see him be very well suited for right. this specific kind of thing. Find that at the football analytics show and find Ed's newsletter over at the power and check out Ed on Twitter at the power rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel research on Twitter at FanDuel research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you. Your bets across Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll talk to you once again, Thursday for some last minute NFL draft bets. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>